In previous videos, we built traditional hardwood steps for the back door of our house, including matching balustrades made mostly from reclaimed timber. In this video, we'll be finishing everything off, including painting the balustrades and oiling the hardwood landing and steps. A fairy has filled in all the screw and nail holes, cracks and old cutouts for hinges in the hardwood posts while we weren't watching. The filler used is pre-mixed and like soft plaster, but rated for outdoor use. And of course it can be sanded. We don't really want to get the post perfectly smooth, just fill in the roughest parts enough so it looks tidy but still has a lot of character that is in keeping with the original house that was a worker's cottage built back in 1890. An angle grinder with an 80 grit flap disc is used to shape the post. Then an orbital sander with 120 grit sandpaper is used to get a smoother finish ready for painting and give the paint something to stick to. But before we can paint we must clean off all the sanding dust and any grime that may have built up as paint won't stick very well to any of this. Then we can prime all the raw timber and filler with a primer sealer. It's important we fill in all the gaps and cracks so water doesn't get in, as this can cause the paint to peel. Although where these steps are located, they get very little direct sunlight and only this bottom area gets rain because there is a roof high above. We then orbital sand the primer with 120 grit that gets off any lumps and bumps and shows up any flaws that may need filling that we missed before. It's easier to see these flaws when it's all white. A detail sander is used to get into all the hard to reach spots the orbital sander couldn't reach. Anything the detail sander can't reach must be done by hand. Then of course we need to blow off all the dust left behind which can easily be done with a vacuum cleaner on blow because there won't be any other grime at this point. We then apply another coat of sealer primer undercoat because we have gone down to the timber in some spots here which needs to be sealed. Once this is dry we then go over it all with 240 grit sandpaper by hand so it all feels really smooth because we will be painting this with high gloss oil based enamel paint that needs a good smooth finish underneath. We can then start applying this top coat to the posts. We start with the posts because it's easier to cut into the post from the handrail than the other way around. We paint the handrails before the slats because the slats are easier to cut into the handrails than the other way around. The next job is to fit timber on the edge of the landing to tidy this up. We're using some 67mm wide Merbau screening that we've cut to fit between the stringers. Uh, you come to help mate? Okay. Come to help. We'll be nailing these boards on, but because they're hardwood, we need to pre-drill first through the boards and then through the timber we're nailing onto. We're using galvanized decking nails with a dome head and a twist on the shank so they won't work loose over time. We'll leave these nails visible because they look quite nice. This end has no rafter to nail onto so I'm having to nail these in on an angle to the stringer. To get the nail hard up a punch is used because the head of the hammer won't fit in there. 
We then repeat the same with the second board, being very careful to pre-drill deep enough so the nails don't hit the end of the hole. Otherwise, if this happens, the nail just bends over and makes a mess of everything. We then add a third board, but still have that small uncovered part on the right, which we fill in with some offcuts to complete this part of the stairs. Next, we'll be preparing all the hardwood ready for oiling, starting with the landing. Right, what we've done here is um, punched all the nails in that were um, not down already and put some um, filler in there. It's an outdoor rated um, wood filler. And we've already had a go at sanding this at some point. Um, now we're going to do the final sanding. I've found a disc sander is the most effective here because it follows the contour of the boards whereas a belt sander wants to get everything dead flat which takes a lot longer and we don't want it dead flat we want to retain the character of the boards as these are all reclaimed 130 year old boards from the original back veranda of the house. A drawback of the disc sander, apart from being really hard on the back, is it creates a lot of dust, which needs removing with an industrial vacuum cleaner quite regularly, so we can see what we're doing. The disc sander also does not fit under the balustrading, nor does it get hard under the corners, which is where a detail sander is handy. This little sander cost a little less than four packs of sanding pads and came with a pack of pads, so is the way to go. It also follows the contour of the boards, so complements the disc sander quite nicely. What we have here is um, this filler uh, for the nail holes. The colour of it is a little white. Now if we wet this, gives us an idea of how it will look once it's got oil on it. And it's still looking a bit stuck. The, the filler does darken up a bit, bit, but it's still quite still quite light. So my plan is to take some of these acrylic paints. Just dabble a bit. Oh, way too much on there. Now. And just a little cheapy brush paint in there. That's probably a bit bright there, so probably okay. not get it everywhere. Got some black. Oh, doesn't like coming out in small quantities of stuff. Makes it look different colours in there. Match it up, wipe it off, match it up. Still needs a bit more black in it, I think. We're not necessarily trying to match the filler to the timber exactly. We just want it to blend in better, because this looks nicer. Once we've done all the holes and everything has dried out, the nail holes look too dark. But once it's oiled, they will blend in nicely. Although we'll need to sand the steps before oiling everything, so we'll come back to this later. The treads are rough sawn and stringers nicely dressed. We'd like them to match up a bit better, which is why we're sanding the treads. Being rough sawn does make them non-slip, which is an advantage. But if we sand the treads to 80 grit only and then oil them, they should still look nice and not be too slippery. We start using 36 grit because it takes those saw marks out a lot quicker. Then change to 60 grit 
to take the deeper swell marks out left behind by the 36 grit. Then we go to our final 80 grit with an orbital sander to remove the light swirl marks left behind by the 60 grit disc sander to get our final non-slip finish ready for oiling. We sand the stringers too with the orbital sander to clean off any paint droppings from painting the balustrades and smooth out any marks made from sanding the treads. It also gets the finish of the stringers nice and even just before oiling because they're made from merbau which tends to bleed a rich brown colour when wet that can be washed out with a lot of effort but rather than do this we seal it in with oil. We then blow off all the dust so we can start oiling. For some reason I started oiling the back doorstep then moved on to the landing using a good quality clear decking oil that is with no stain in it as I wanted to retain the natural colour of the timber. The steps are a much lighter colour than the landing. Not sure what timber the landing is made from as it is reclaimed from the original back veranda of the house that was built 130 years ago. It's probably black butt which grew locally back then and was good for veranda decking because of its durability. To be honest, I'd rather have the steps a lighter colour anyway, so you can see where you're stepping in the dark. Who wants near black steps anyway? Once the oil has dried, even with a second coat, the colour of the landing is a bit lighter and has a lot of character that's in keeping with the rest of the house. Those nail holes we filled in and coloured now blend in even though they are still a little darker than the timber in places they don't stand out and add to the character quite nicely. Looking at the steps from the back it would be nice if they were filled in between the steps like we did with the edge of the landing but this would need to have been done when we built the steps in the first place and we do plan on putting some ferns under the steps which will be nicer I think. Overall the steps do look quite unique and are a nice feature at the back of the house. We just need to finish off everything else around the back such as that dodgy old laundry shed battens covering what's under the house, a carport and some landscaping, which we will be doing in the near future. But in the meantime, we have other more pressing projects to do, such as finishing the filled-in verandas around the front and side of the house, including an ensuite bathroom, then the kitchen, which are all topics of the next videos. See you then!